go on the record? On the record. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you to everyone about their uh, flexibility and where we are this morning. As many of you know, but perhaps the people in our viewing audience don't know, the State House is under construction, so we're in boardroom at the tax department. So hopefully the sound will be okay. You'll be able to follow along. This is our last uh, meeting of the PEG Access TV study group, and we're hoping today to get some draft language out that we will be able to um, bring back to the House and the Senate and go through committee process and hopefully figure out next steps for how to shore up funding for PEG Access going forward. So as you know, um, our legislative council, Maria Royal, did send out a draft proposal. And I think it makes the most sense to start with the draft proposal with uh, comments and questions. Yes, Dan. Uh, thank you very much, Senator. Uh, and thank you to all the members uh, for the opportunity to, to be here and to participate. And, uh, Thank you for the drafting of this. I have some just general comments. If, I, if it's okay, I'll read them. Yes, and actually, before you do that, Dan, I wonder, Maria, if it makes sense. We should have started with a walkthrough, and I, I apologize, Dan. Let's, Perfect. Let's start with a walkthrough. I'm still in the car driving from Brattleboro, and I need to put my <laughs> I'm right legislative I know you are. I know you are. You're probably on the highway together. So, um, so why don't we start with our uh, legislative council attorney giving us a walkthrough of the draft proposal. Sure. Do you want her to sit? Sure. Why don't, since, uh, since we're gathered here together um, in this new space, why don't we introduce ourselves? So I'm Becca Ballant. I'm the chair of the committee. I represent Wyndham County, and I serve on the Economic Development Committee uh, and Finance in the Senate. I'm Representative Mike Yantoshka. I, uh, I represent Charlotte, part of Hinesburg uh, in the House, and I'm Vice Chair of the uh, PEG Access Study Committee. I'm Karen Horn with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. I'm Clay Purvis with the Department of Public Service. <coughs> Good morning, I'm Dan Glanville, uh, representing the industry. Andrea Papini with the Public Utility Commission. Lauren Glendavidian, representing Vermont Access Network. And I'm Maria Royal with Legislative Council. Thank you. Does everybody have a hard copy? Mm -hmm. I know Mike Barron has some extras, and there are also some extras up here for anybody who would like one. So we'll walk through the draft proposal, um, and I'll uh, maybe fill in a little bit on some of the considerations that went into the, the language choices, and of course, any questions or clarifications we can address along the way, or at the end, whatever works best for the committee. So uh, this is basically a study. Um, we'll just, it's not very long, so maybe we'll read through paragraph by paragraph. Mm -hmm. um, so what it does is uh, the, it authorizes the Joint Fiscal Committee to contract with one or more independent consultants to assist the General Assembly with evaluating options for financing public benefit programs through an assessment on communications providers based on their use of public rights of way. The consultant shall have expertise in finance and economic modeling and in communications law and policy. The joint fiscal <coughs> office in consultation with the office of the legislative council shall administer consultant contracts for the joint fiscal committee. I did talk um, briefly with Steve Klein, the head of joint fiscal office. Um, he did uh, suggest having the language say one or more consultants, he was concerned that you might not actually find a firm that has both the communications expertise and the economic mm -hmm. modeling. They might submit a joint proposal. So that's why that language was expanded. In evaluating options as required by this subsection, the consultant or consultants shall consider and make specific findings and recommendations regarding the following. <coughs> whether and to what extent communication services may be subject to a right-of-way assessment, taking into consideration the Communications Act of 1934 as amended and as it pertains to information service, Title I, common carrier services under Title II, radio transmissions, Title III, and cable services which are regulated under Title VI. These are all different titles 
of the Communications Act and the various communication services that are subject to its regulation. Uh, in addition, line four, <coughs> the Internet Tax Freedom Act, which you've heard a little bit about as amended, and then C, any other relevant laws and judicial precedent and orders, regulations, or bulletins issued by the FCC. And then finally, line seven, subdivision D, state and municipal laws and ordinances assessing or regulating the use of public rights of way by communications providers in Vermont and in other jurisdictions, including the terms and conditions of lease agreements or other contractual arrangements, as well as the revenue generated and the programs funded with any fees collected. And then in terms of uh, what the consultant shall develop in subdivision two, line 12 of page two, the consultant shall develop alternative models for revenue generation based on right of way, a right of way assessment, and shall develop current and future revenue <coughs> projections that reflect market trends in the communications industry the models shall describe technical implementation issues, including the availability of or need for mapping data related to communications infrastructure in the public <coughs> rights of way. In developing alternative models, the consultant shall analyze models enacted in other jurisdictions, including the revenue generated and the programs funded. The consultant retained under this section shall have the technical support of the JFO, the Office of the Legislative Council, the Department of Public Service, the Department of Taxes, the Agency of Transportation, and the Agency of Digital Services. The funding for the program, there are two options, A and B, for your consideration. Again, I spoke with Steve Klein about what his estimated cost was for this um, study, and <coughs> roughly, he said between about Three hundred and five hundred thousand dollars. So the first option is uh, an appropriation, uh, depending on what amount uh, you uh, arrive at, and the money is from the general fund to the JFO to cover their expenses. The second option in subdivision B is um, a bill back provision, and. This would work by JFO, essentially billing the PUC, the Public Utility Commission, for ex its expenses incurred under this study. And then the PUC would allocate those expenses to communications providers um, that have infrastructure in the rights of way. Um, the remaining language in that subdivision, upon petition of a communications provider to which costs are proposed to be allocated the PUC shall review and determine, after opportunity for hearing, the allocation of such costs and may amend or revise such allocations. That's standard um, billback language under Title 30. But basically, the PUC makes a determination on how to allocate, and the mm -hmm. providers are given an opportunity to uh, ask for reconsideration. So those are uh, two options for funding this particular study. Then subdivision five at the bottom of page three, on or before January 1st of 2021, the consultant retained pursuant to this subsection shall submit a report of his or her findings and recommendations to the General Assembly. The report shall include draft legislation implementing the proposal that represents the most equitable, mean, equitable means of extracting the greatest public benefit for Vermonters from the commercial use of public rights of way. And then finally, on page four, there are kind of two separate uh, studies. Uh, the first one, subsection B, um, you'll see I put in italics the state auditor. Um, this is the issue about whether there should be structural, potential structural changes um, that pertain to the AMOs to uh, increase their efficiency or extract some cost savings. I don't know who you would like to do that study. State auditor was just uh, a person that came to mind in state government that do, does this type of activity mm -hmm. for state programs generally, but that's for you to decide. In any event, it says the state auditor shall assess the services offered by Vermont's 25 independent nonprofit 
peg access centers and determine whether there are opportunities to achieve efficiencies and cost savings through a restructuring or consolidation of services. The auditor shall review models in other jurisdictions. The auditor shall report his or her findings and recommendations to the relevant committees of jurisdiction on or before January 1st of 2021. And then finally, subsection C, um, there was some conversation about perhaps doing a study about VIT uh, and whether PEG could uh, assist with offering some of those services that were discontinued. So um, again, I don't know who exactly would do the study, but the, uh, one proposal for consideration is the Secretary of Digital Services in consultation with the Commissioner of Buildings and General Services shall evaluate the costs and benefits of the state partnership with PEG access centers to coordinate ex and expand the delivery of video conferencing services, taking into consideration the services provided by Vermont Interactive Television, which was renamed Vermont Interactive Technologies and uh, was, not, was defunded, I think, in 2015. <coughs> The purpose of this public-private partnership would be to increase public participation in state proceedings. The secretary shall report his or her findings and recommendations to the standing committees of jurisdiction January 1st, 2021. And this would be effective on package. So that is a very detailed walkthrough, but thank you. Help no. in terms of your mm -hmm. discussion. So before I go to Dan, are there questions specifically for Maria? Um, I, I have a couple of questions. Great. Uh, I wonder if we need to um, define public benefit programs in Section A a little bit. Like, what do we mean by public benefit? It's an excellent question. I don't. What do you mean by public benefit? Yes. What do we mean? By <laughs> Um, I did keep it broad. That was yeah. the, mm -hmm. you know, the charge to me. Yeah. Um, but to the extent you want to be more specific. Mm -hmm. um, and then they, so maybe we could talk about that. Yes. And then my other question is, um, is this, the way it's written here, would it just look at use of public right of ways? Or is it looking at other revenue generating mechanisms as well? I think the charge to me was to just look at the use of public rights away if you want to okay. expand it. Mm -hmm. Again, that's something that certainly could be incorporated. Thank you. So back to Karen's first question in terms of defining more clearly what we mean by public benefits programs. What is some language that would help illuminate that? <coughs> Just the question is, do we want to restrict it to um, uh, public access television, the AMOs, or do we want to, um, you know, make it a broader reach of programs that may be eligible for funding? <coughs> and so you're saying perhaps to pull that out and be specific that I, we're talking about? Yeah, I think we want to be a little bit more specific there. Lauren Glenn, did you have something to? Um, I was just going to hear the questions and maybe Dan's comments and think about that question about public benefits a little bit more. Okay. All right. Yeah. <coughs> thank you. Uh, so, just to thank you very much for the drafting uh, and for the explanation. So, I have a couple of general comments. I know that we've all uh, worked hard at these meetings since the springtime and. Uh, had an opportunity to look at this uh, from the perspective of uh, the current health of uh, public access television. And I think that the uh, facts that have been presented indicate that we are in a state of good health and uh, that perhaps we can look into the future to see uh, where things might be. Um, with regard to uh, generally the uh, draft proposal before us. I know that we had spoken about between three hundred and five hundred thousand uh, dollars We would have concern with regard to the uh, bill back provisions uh, to the communications industry as it stands because we do think that the uh, draft proposal 
although we've had some early discussion with regard to satellite providers, uh, does exclude them uh, from uh, consideration uh, in this entire proposal. Uh, we also would have uh, some general concerns. Can, can <coughs> yes. Dan, can you just hold on sure. one second so that we are clear on where that, that language is specifically in the draft? We're talking about it's, uh, option page option three. B page on page, page three. three. Yeah, okay. page three, line seven yep. through fourteen. Okay, and so your recommendation, you you would <coughs> like it to not be given as an op an option there for for building. Yes, correct. Okay, I just uh, want to make sure we're we're looking at the language specifically that you're referring to. Do you want to stick to topics? Like if I have something on that topic, do you want to talk about that or do you want Dan to sure. continue okay. through? <clears throat> Can I just suggest maybe you finish your okay. comments and then let's circle. Sure. Let's get them all on the table and then well, all right. I'll defer to whatever the chair wants me to do. <laughs> I actually would I would actually like to hear what Andrea has to say about this particular issue. And because I also saw Clay's head nodding, and so I'd like to hear, you want to get all that on the table before we move on to the next thing. Andrea. Okay, thanks. Yep. Um, so the commission has some concerns about the um, communications provider's definition, which kind of speaks to what Dan was saying about you know, satellite providers and who falls under that. Um, so that's kind of the first thing there. And, um, You're talking about in that same section. Yes, in that same section. So in, in general, the commission's concerned about the, this section and the bill back and the implementation. So I was just going to give some information about mm -hmm. um, why. Um, the second thing is the uh, jurisdiction issues about billing back for this type of um, uh, study. Not sure where this falls and how the um, jurisdiction issues would play out. Um, and then, from a practical implementation issue, um, the commission has instituted some uh, more streamlined procedures and for simplifying how billback would work. And this language goes against what the commission has been um, trying to implement. Um, and then just generally also the, the process and proceeding for deciding how to appropriate those costs would be pretty labor intensive for the commission um, and it would take a lot of time and so there's some concern around that too. Um, and so in summary, we would strongly, the commission strongly would prefer section A of this, uh, which is the general fund option. Okay. And Dan mentioned the 300 to 500,000. I wasn't at the last meeting. So no, that was, I just heard that this Maria morning. was talking oh, about, okay. yes. Steve Klein at JFO gave an estimate that a study of this scope and size would cost somewhere between three and five. Hundred thousand dollars. So thanks. that's where that came okay, from. Thanks. Okay, and again, these are best estimates. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Clay, it seemed like you also wanted to weigh in on this particular issue. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Can yep. I ask yes. One absolutely. Question of Andrea. Yes. Uh, so, are, are you saying that the that the um, uh, Public Utility Commission would find it hard to allocate resources to do this study? Um, not hard to allocate resources, but that it would be. Um, Oh, you mean to, can you, can you say that again, well, to do the study? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm wondering whether uh, PUC has the resources and the personnel and the uh, <coughs> expertise. Uh, I'm sure you have the expertise, but do you have, with all the other work the PUC does, would it be difficult to do this in addition? Yes, it would be difficult to do, um, to be intimately involved in the, um, in the study. Uh, mm -hmm. And as, as it was written earlier, you know, it says um, section three before that, it does say the Department of Public Service um, would, would assist, but it doesn't say the Public Utility Commission, and that would be um, 
that would be where we would go, considering that the department has a, um, I'm de going to defer to Clay, but um, you have a telecommunications division, but this isn't really telecommunications. I, I, think I don't know. So let me, so let me like, Clay talk to so Okay, so you have a concern with the Department of Public Service being named at the top of page three as the. Do, do I have concerns? I'm asking. Oh, no, that is what no, you're... sorry. No, I do not. Okay. I, I think I was trying to answer Representative. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> subsection three <laughs> is that the JFO would have, uh, or the, the consultant would have access to the Department of Public Service for uh, creating the report. The only role for the PUC here uh, is, is to administer the, the bill back um, yeah. provision. So we're and helping was... to write the report, they're helping to pay for it. Um, but I'm sorry. Oh, I and I just wanted to say that I, w I was expressing concern about the you know, the time that the process would take to allocate these costs and to determine who the communications providers are and, you know, who, what, who falls under that. And, and yeah, so that, that was what I was expressing concern about. Thanks. Um, so I, I think uh, from the department's perspective, I think we share um, the PUC's concerns about, you know, judicial resources being um, apply to this. This seems very um, labor intensive. Um, not necessarily a surefire way to succeed at, at um, securing payment. It almost seems like the the payment method here, the method for uh, paying for the um, the report, is uh, utilizing the same scheme that the report itself is intended to explore. Um, so. I, I don't know how it would play out. Um, one concern that I, I think comes to mind, at least at first blush, is that the cable companies, they already pay uh, a franchise fee, which is for the use of the right of way. So I guess my question is, does 300 to 500,000 come out of the, um, the payments that the, pe the PEG channels receive? So would, it, basically, it, Peg's going to be paying for it one way or the other. I guess that's my concern. Um, and if that's okay, I'm okay. Um, I, I think that question kind of goes back to the definition of public benefit programs. And really, we're here for Peg, so mm -hmm. this is this is about Peg. So I guess the question is, should should maybe should maybe they pay for the the report? And I'm throwing that out. A question, but I, I don't know that this is going to work. Um, I, I, I think that it's going to be very problematic uh, for the PUC to um, fulfill this section. Okay. So Can I put one more one more comment on that based upon what you may. what was said? So we do think that it, it seems a bit the bill back <coughs> provision seems a bit. And I, I use this word respectfully, but prejudicial against the communications industry uh, as to what, what we're looking at here. So, uh, and then we would make the argument as to whether or not uh, we've had a full conversation as to whether or not taxpayer funds should be used for this as, as, as uh, taxpayers, just making that argument. But uh, to Clay's point with regard to offset, I do want to state, as I stated before, that uh, we are currently in compliance with and we're complying with the 621 order and we will work with local franchising authorities. That local franchising authority in Vermont is the state of Vermont to determine its application to our current franchise obligations and implementing uh, that will involve a conversation with the LFA. So I don't know what impact this would have, but we would obviously evaluate that and have a conversation as we will with any piece that would result in a reduction from the 5%. Just want to state that clearly for the record. Does everyone know what the 621 order is? We want to refresh everyone's memory, Dan, about sure, the Sure, it's the, it's, it's the, I'm, I apologize. No, no, no. Uh, it's the order for, uh, from the FCC with regard to what in-kind costs can be deducted from the 5%, uh, what in-kind costs associated with franchise obligations can be deducted. Uh, so that's why I, I gave that general statement because we're still in review phase on that, haven't had any implementation, we're not gonna do it unilaterally, it will involve a conversation. 
And I'm not providing a legal opinion here. I'm, I'm posing it as a question because mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're more or less in uncharted territory here. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that potential exists. So I just want to make sure that mm -hmm. the community is aware of it. And I just want to remind everybody, too, that whatever we come to today is just the next step in this. And it goes to the committees of jurisdiction in the House and the Senate to be further worked. So this is not the last statement on this by any means. I would just want to get to some kind of consensus for the next phase of this. It's important to all of us to make sure we're looking at uh, shoring up these critical stations long term. And so I just want to make sure that we're not wasting each other's time this morning. If I feel like there isn't enough support for B, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. I want to move towards something we can come to agreement on. And so that was my reason, Lauren Glenn, for focusing on this piece. And if there isn't people advocating strongly for Section B, then I would just assume we take it off the table and focus on things that we can coalesce around. But I will ask my vice chair if you are in agreement. I, I kind of agree with that. I think uh, uh, the simpler way of doing it is just to have the Joint Fiscal Office uh, uh, fund the study, or the legislature fund the study through the Joint Fiscal Office, I should say. Question. You may. I, 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 this is a bit of a sticker shock to me. Um, I was, as a rule of thumb, um, just assume everything in state government costs fifty thousand dollars. So, anytime we want to write a report, we just ask for fifty thousand. So, I was curious, Maria, um, how uh, they arrived at, at this number. You'd have to talk to Steve Klein. Okay. I just asked. You know, help help me flesh out a little bit for the committee what we're doing right in terms of cost. And certainly, and he's not in the office today, so. I, I always think that, I mean, the, the consultant industry, hopefully no one in the room is in the consult, consultancy <laughs> industry, but I mean, you can find a consultant for whatever price. So if you if you say we're going to spend 300000 on this report, you're going to get a bunch of bids for 300000 If you say, no, we're only going to spend $25,000, you will get a bunch of bids for 25000 So. And, and I think <laughs> I'll refer to the uh, uh, study on carbon pricing that we uh, funded uh, not last, not this past year, but the year before, and that came in at about 125,000. And that was that's a pretty extensive study. Peter Blum, when I asked him about this, um, he said somewhere between 100 and 150. Okay. So this is his estimate, but again, not knowing who else you might have to engage in that work. And so. I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Maria, is uh, Stephen Klein was also saying we may have to retain more than one <coughs> consultant, and perhaps that is also the reason for the, the higher cost. But again, it's, a, it's, it's an estimate, and it will go through legislative review in many different ways before any appropriation uh, is given to joint fiscal. So I don't want to focus too much on the amount since it's just ballpark. Um, I want to make sure we're focusing on the, the concept. Um, so is there anyone that would like to advocate for keeping B in? Part B, I mean. Part B, sorry, Part B, page uh, three, lines seven through 14 as an alternative funding for this study. Because if not, we're going to move on. Let's move on. OK, let's move on. Back to you, Dan. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I, I have one other, uh, or two, three other matters. Uh, on page 3, uh, line 17, uh, we would respectfully request that the word shall should be may in that regard, because if in the determination of the consultant after doing their diligence, it is determined that there, that there is not a need for legislation, they shouldn't be obligated to produce it. <clears throat> that's a valid point. Mike, can you say that louder? I think that's a valid point, yeah. Other thoughts on that? I agree with that. Um, I think it ties the hands of the consultant, maybe non 
legislative um, options on the table, and that might be the best way to go. Okay. Just going to ask everyone to speak up a little bit more, just because of the, the wind. And I love this room, but the wind is howling. Um, so anyone in disagreement with that? Okay, so we're changing, Maria, the shall to may. Dan, did you have one other thing? With the broom, I do feel like I'm on Harry Potter. So. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's the uh, best we could do with our office. It's oh, very no, nice. Okay. I like it very it's much. Actually it's actually a compliment. My, it's one of my favorite yeah. rooms in this building. It just spooky. The, the ceiling is incredible. It is. Um, we're in the Great Hall at Hogwarts. Um, as long as I don't hear a voice, a voice saying Slytherin to me, right? <laughs> uh, so, uh, two other brief matters. Uh, just, uh, it, and it wasn't really addressed, but who will have the, uh, I presume, Senator, that you're speaking with regard to the choosing of the consultant that the appropriate committee would put parameters in place as to how the consultant is chosen, what requirements they must have, and, and all that, because it seems a little bit vague in general. I'm gonna to defer to Maria, because I, I actually don't know much about, uh, about the process of retaining consultants. Yeah, um, I don't really work in that area either, but I do know uh, it's not uncommon for the Joint Fiscal Committee to retain a consultant through the JFO, so they, you know, as representatives of the legislature, to the extent there are not criteria here, or um, you know that they'll fill in the, the blanks. They have to go through an RFP process, um, which is a you know pretty public process, um, and entertain options from numerous firms. And then ultimately, the JFC, the Joint Fiscal Committee, would make the final decision about the terms, the specific terms of the contract. So. Do you want to remind everybody who's on the Joint Fiscal Committee? So th I believe those are the chairs of all of the money committees. So that would be Appropriations, House and Senate, Ways and Means in the House, um, Finance in the Senate. I don't know if there are other chairs. I think it's just... I, I think the Transportation and the trans chairs. Oh, that makes sense. The T-Bill, but probably not the institution's capital bill. And so... Dan, did you have suggestions for how to be more prescriptive in the charge? I don't. I okay. just wanted to raise just it as a concern. Raise question. Yeah. Okay. So uh, in, in part A of section one there on page one, uh, we kind of spell out what, mm -hmm. we, what uh, skills this consultant shall have, uh, <clears throat> expertise in finance, economic modeling, communication law and policy. And uh, then we talk about the various uh, aspects of telecommunications in uh, part A there, below. I'm, I'm not sure. What, You're not saying sure. it's pretty prescriptive. Yes, yeah, I think yeah. it's, it's prescriptive enough already. I just and wanted to I'm make sure. Not to, uh, I don't, I'm not quite sure how the, uh, uh, numbering of the paragraphs goes, uh, the A and then a one and then a capital A and all numbers. that stuff. Yep. It probably has to do with where this fits in other legislation. But. So I think, too, <coughs> it comes back to the, uh, the opening paragraph there, which is how are we going to deal with the concept of the public benefits programs, or are we just going to spell out that what we're talking about is Peg Access TV, that's what we're talking about. That's why we're here. And so I'm wondering how that people are feeling about that. Do you want to just talk about why you use the word communications as opposed to a more broad term? Such as, well, it seems to me, at least in the research we've done and the conversations that we've had, that um, while the path has addresses peg access, <clears throat> where we have wondered and where our questions have lay, lay mm -hmm. is with the state's authority to require broadband co compensation from Title I mm -hmm. broadband. And we have a general idea that there are prohibitions on that, mm -hmm. 
but there are also places in the country that are looking at this differently. Um, Eugene, Oregon being one of them, which their Supreme Court upheld, and the FCC has gone after them and they're in kind, but that may be ultimately upheld, we don't know. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these questions are in play, and so I think that the term, I started to use the term public benefits when looking at this question of public compensation for private use of the rights of play, whether it's Title VI, Title II, or Title I. So the question became bigger. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we talk about public benefits in re response to Title VI, Congress was trying to guarantee diversity of voices and opinions and to ensure that community needs and interests were met mindful of cost. Mm -hmm. That's what that meant. Mm -hmm. So that is, in a small Title VI sense, what public benefit is. Um, yet, we are really needing to look beyond Title VI to answer this question, because we have franchise fees, but that's declining. So I think that the scope of this is narrow, more narrow. It, it, I, I don't think the scope of this is gonna get us to information that we're curious to find out and possibly apply in Vermont. I mean, we, it says here, it refers to Title I, um, but I don't think that's a closed question. I think that's actually the question on the table. And I think we have to be able to look at it. So I don't think we're just looking at communications providers. I don't think the answer is just in the communications realm. So I, I guess what I'm saying is number one, I think that an assessment of communications providers based on their use of public rights of way, I think that's narrow. I don't think that will get us to a new, different way of thinking about this work. Do you have a um, suggestion for alternative language? Well, I think we speak to it, it that we're researching Title I, Title II, other, I mean, we're looking in these places, but mm -hmm. We're not just looking, at, we may not just be looking at an assessment of okay. just, commu of, communications to me means Title VI, and I don't know if that's what you intended. No. no. So, communications is a term of art. I mean, it does refer to Title VI, right? I mean, telecommunications is Title II. So anyway, I, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know the right mm -hmm. term here. Um, I just don't want to be restricted by it. And, and in terms of public benefits, I think what we're really talking about is meeting the need, the, the communications needs and interests. <coughs> Community, communications needs and interests. Community needs and interests in relation to the widest diversity of ideas. I and mean, that's really what we're trying to accomplish. Does in your, in your uh, opinion, does public benefit programs include more than, than what we're talking about here with PEG? Uh, well, I don't want to be grandiose, but I do think that the universal service question is part of this because they're dealing with the same decline in revenue and they're, we're going to need to look at alternative ways of promoting those public benefits as well. I mean, the whole environment of internet, telecom, and communications is in play here. So I'm thinking of this as bigger than just looking at replacing the franchise fee money. I think that it's looking at replacing, it's looking at the internet as, you know, how do you structure compensating the public interest, the public, as internet use increases and these other technologies decrease. So I think it's an ecosystem. And I don't really have the precise language, but I think the concept is important for us to discuss as a group. Because I suspect that other people at the table don't see it as broadly. Yeah, I would like to comment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, with, with all due respect to that opinion, I, I, I'm always looking for ways we can find money for broadband, right? That's part of, part of my charge. Um, 
uh, so you know that's that's another kind of public benefit. But I think the reason we're all here is because of PEG. Right? Mm -hmm. We we were charged with looking into PEG, finding alternative revenues. You have PEG access services in the title of Section One, but then I don't see it anywhere actually in the body of the legislation. Maybe it's there. I, I don't know. Uh, but public benefit kind of implies something greater, and I think we're now outside of the scope of our this committee's enabling legislation, right. which was to go look at PEG and come up with recommendations on how to uh, ensure adequate funding for PEG. Um, so I, I would, I think, be more inclined to narrow the scope of this to looking at ways that PEG can be funded. In fact, I, I, oh, I see all this, all this right away stuff um, as um, kind of a rabbit hole. Um, I mean, there might be other ways to fund PEG. Maybe it should be, the, the, the consultant should look more broadly at um, you know, how, how PEGs are established today, how they operate, um, where there might be funding opportunities, um, and the pros and cons of those, um, you know, maybe it, it should involve uh, combining section one with the, or I guess, with section B here on the last page. Oh, I see, it's all in section one. So study in A and B, maybe, maybe they ought to be combined. Maybe there should be one study that looks at all of those questions. You mean the state auditor? The section? state auditor report. Um, you have one consultant going out and looking at ways that we can generate revenue, I guess ostensibly to pay for PEG, and then another report saying how can PEGs do things differently. I, I, I don't see why we can't do that as one, one report. When I read the language under the state auditor, I thought that it made sense to have the consultant that was working on as Clay said, to, to work together on that, or to, sorry, to um, possibly be the same, uh, the same consultant, mm -hmm. as opposed to involving the, the state auditor. And I was also wondering, you know, if um, the AMOs, if, what, what the AMOs would think about the state auditor being uh, charged with that. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm digressing a little bit, so I want to stay with what we're talking about. Right. But, uh, Maria? No, just to clarify, um, you're right, Clay, that uh, subsection A is much broader than just PEG services. The public benefit is not defined. I don't think that was a charge to me. If you want to limit it to PEG services, you can, obviously. Um, and then the reason why PEG Access Services is listed in the subject line is because of the second study, which has to do with the auditors looking at, and I probably should have added VIT services because that's the third study that you look at. So there are really three things, a very general right-of-way assessment for public benefit, very broadly defined, um, the structural issue with respect to PEG services, and then the video conferencing. So there are kind of three things, however you want to mm -hmm. define them, but I just wanted to clarify that. In terms of the term communications providers, I really just followed the language in the Federal Communications Act. Mm -hmm. um, in general, under Title VI, cable services is the term used for cable services and cable providers. So, um, and I tried to delineate in terms of the services that are subject to the assessment information services, telecommunication services, cable service, radio transfer. So it's the broadest, if you want to move forward with this, I think it's the, the broadest reach of services under the Federal Communications Act. Um, but to the extent there's still confusion, that can be clarified. Mike. So um, I concur with, with uh, Clay's uh, assessment that we should stay within the scope of our charge and restricted to the DEG access services uh, rather than using a broad term like public benefits programs. Um, I was also wondering 
how if we have uh, Part B there with State Auditor, if they're looking at the structuring of uh, AMOs and everything, and you've got another consultant saying, okay, under the current structure, how are we going to do it? The results of Part B could affect the, the, uh, the, the recommendation of, of the consultant doing Part A. So, um, yeah, there has to be more of a tie-in there, I think. I, I'm not sure how to do it, and I'm not even sure whether the state auditor is the person, is the... Uh, I have concerns about jurisdictional issues section there. Section to do it, yeah, the department to do it, so... Um, and I'm not sure if we're not receiving state funds, whether we need to have a assessment of... I don't, I, don't, I don't think that assessment's necessary. Well, you aren't, you aren't receiving state funds currently. Right, that's and, what I mean. That's, right. So that's I think another... There's a, yeah. I mean, if there, if there was a clause in here about allocating dollars for PEG, then I think that that study makes sense right. to do. Yeah. But I think if we're not going to do that, then I don't think the study's necessary at this time. You're talking about the study in part, subpart B? With the state auditor. <clears throat> right. I, I, I don't know that the state auditor is the right I think the state but auditor I, I, is I not the right person. Take, take, I think that the substance of that report ought to actually be included in that A. I mean, yeah. you're going to have a consultant looking at revenue um, options for funding PEG. I think it's only fair to look at kind of the other side of the equation. Every business has revenue and they have expenses. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I think that the report to kind of look like a balance sheet in that regard, so. Um. Other thoughts on that, Karen? Um, I, I, I sort of concur with that assessment. I think that um, probably we should be looking at PEG access um, because if you, well, if you're, um, if you don't focus the consultant, it's going to be so broad that you really, I think, won't get anything in the end that's of value. Um, so, but I, I would be more interested in opening up sort of what the potential revenue sources are, having a wider study of that. And then um, I do think that, uh, that if you're doing the assessment of um, services offered and efficiencies, that that should be part of the consultant's um, job as well. I don't think the state auditor is the appropriate place for that. I was also thinking maybe the public service department could do it, but they're not going to be happy about that. <laughs> we, have, we have many reports to do right now. And, um, yeah. I, okay, I so I... Independent consultants. So I hear consensus that the state auditor is not to be charged to do this. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, no, so then the next part is well, did, did we settle on the uh, language for public benefits programs? No, I want to put that on hold just for a second, okay. if I could, okay. Mike. I want to get a sense from the group, even if the state auditor is not going to be charged with this, is it important that some entity is doing research on, uh, so I'm on page four, so we're all on the same top of page four on the, um, the PEG access centers themselves. So, um, if, if, if I may, I, yes, I think please, that we, we could say um, whoever, the consultant shall assess the services offered by the um, PEG access centers and determine whether there are opportunities to achieve efficiency and cost savings, period, um, not uh, dictate that it needs to be through restructuring or consolidation mm -hmm. of services. Right. So you're saying strike that. To achieve efficiencies and cost savings, period. Yes. And then, okay. you know, looking at what happens in other jurisdictions is always, I think, valuable. Yep. So. Thoughts on that suggestion? I would suggest putting the language, uh, replacing auditor with consultant and taking that language and putting it as a new three under part A and then moving three and four down one. 
do people agree with Karen's assessment that spelling out in this draft language through a restructuring or consolidation of services is not, it's not something I can get behind. I don't, I don't like that language. I don't think we should be prescriptive about how that's going to happen. I, but I, I agree. I think it's implied, um, when you say opportunities to achieve saving or efficiencies and cost savings. Um, that may I, not I think be. A, a proper you know, consultant is going to think about restructuring as one potential option. It doesn't need to be spelled out. So I agree. Mm -hmm. okay. And I agree with what Clay said too about this going hand in hand with any you know, uh, information researched on the study. So on the um, sorry, on uh, the funding. Yeah. yeah. So Maria, are you following our editing here? Okay. So yes, we shall <laughs> find out. Yes. So, so basically, as I, as I think I understand what's being suggested is that on line four on page four, striking through a restructuring or consolidation of services. Yes. yes. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then in terms of who that is reported to, do we just want to consolidate that under page three? The consultant will submit a report to the General Assembly. So I guess the question of who gets the report to review? Um, do we want that to make just one? I mean, if we're if the, con the consulting yeah. team is going to take this up, we want to streamline who gets the report. Right. So strike that this goes to Senate Committee on Finance and House Committee on Energy and Technology, or make the whole report go to them. I don't yeah. know how that works. I think the whole report would go to us. And the, um, I'm not sure whether we even need that last sentence there, but uh, the previous sentence probably should be another item of study on the part A. So if uh, page four, lines one through four, uh, one through five actually. One through five, yeah. One through five would go under between lines 19 and 20 on page 2 <coughs> as a new board. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would it be appropriate to add language that says that the uh, consultant shall work with the AMOs to assess the services, or yeah. it seems like there's not really, you know, an identified role for the AMOs with the consultant, so that might help. Mm -hmm. yeah. You could certainly say that the consultant in consultation with, mm -hmm. or with input from, whatever you, mm -hmm. you have a choice, a preference for either of those. Lauren Glenn, do you have a? Preference? I like in consultation with. Okay. okay. Great. All right. And I'm sorry, one. No, no, no go ahead. Do you want it to be with the AMOs or with the Vermont Access, access Network? Network? Yes. Vermont okay. Access. Thank you. Does, uh, I'm sorry, can you remind me, uh, Lauren Glenn, does uh, every AMO, is, are they all a member of? Yes. Of them? You know, so, um, they, they vote, so whatever your position is, you can, Solidly saying that this that this is the position of every single AMO. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I have a couple of clarifications, yes. but I don't know. Yes. Do you still want to discuss any other issues or broader it, issues? Or I do. Or? I just want to know if, in terms of the language that we just talked about, I do think you I'm have okay. what you need? I think so. Okay. I think so. We'll go through at the end and confirm. Great. And so. Um, I want to clear up as best we can the issue um, in section, um, subsection A on the first page, line six. Are we talking about public benefits programs, benefit programs, or are we talking specifically about PEG TV? And I, what's, yeah. I, I, just one final thing on the study of efficiencies. Yes. Um, the Department of Public Service already collects all this information about 
our financial information. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we want to have a reference, you know, that they will rely on existing reports as well as something along those lines. Just to that this information doesn't it, all have to be gathered right. in the raw. It, yep. it, it's historically available. So um, I'm not sure. If, I right. just wanted to point that out. That's an excellent point. Maria, <coughs> do you have thoughts on that? We, we collect these AMO annual reports. I don't know if they're the same as utility annual reports, but there is that Superior Court decision hanging out there about confidentiality. So you may want to be explicit about the department shall provide AMO annual reports to the consultant or something like that. Subject to just confidentiality. Um, I, that's up to you. Um, There's no I just I want uh, to make sure that we have the clear authority to provide the consultant with whatever uh, you feel the consultant needs. Um, that we're not putting the tough place of deciding whether we're allowed to give it out or not. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> I mean, there's nothing confidential in those. They're public reports. Mm -hmm. Oh, if they're public, then, yep. okay. Yep. Okay. Do you still want the language? Um, they're on your website, right? They're on the website, and okay. they're also, the, and you have the historic data going back for a while. So I... I just, I don't, it may not be necessary, it's, it's I just want to yeah. yeah, okay. No, then I stand down and okay. completely off base here. So. <laughs> We've all been there, Clay. Especially the time you off, right? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, do you, do you still want to reference that those reports are available through the Department of Public Service? Or? Um, I mean, I think it's fine to say, you know, the department shall provide. Um, I was actually more Lauren Glenn. You know, yeah. it's basically highlighting that you have you're collecting that information. So not well. You have. I, I think you know you have us as it could um, shall have the technical support. Of, okay. Um, the, I, I assume I was actually going to ask what technical support means in this case, um, and whether that language would be changed to in consultation with um, or in collaboration with kind of language. But if that's what technical support means, then I think you have it there. No, if there's a definition, I think in general it's if you have data or information that's helpful to provide the consultant that you'll make that available. Um, it is pretty common language in right. studies that the agency, whatever agency, shall provide technical support. And or supplementary data, right? So. We'll get it to that. Um, it's not. I mean, that may be true of all aspects of this study, not just that. I mean, it may be a sentence at the end, which is, and maybe it says it already, right? The DPS will provide technical support as needed to aid the work of the consultant. Including but not limited to access to annual reports. Okay. Let me bring that up. So one other thing I noticed is that uh, <clears throat> on page three at the bottom uh, we talked about the, the uh, consultant shall we. we May, shall submit a report for his or her findings and recommendations to the General Assembly. Um, I think we wanna, want that to say to the House Committee on Energy and Technology and the Senate Committee on Finance. Okay, yeah. I have uh, two other small matters. They're, they're kind of the same, but in uh, uh, page one, line 13, after the word recommendations, my, uh, I would respectfully request that we add subject to applicable laws. And then the same wording. Okay, hold on okay. a second so that we can all wrap our brain around what you're saying here. I would assume that whatever we do is subject to applicable laws. I'm the belt and suspenders kind of guy. 
Just a recommendation. <laughs> How do people feel? Is that, I mean, I assume in everything that we do that's implied, so I think that would be an unusual um, addition there. I don't know how other people feel about that. I don't feel it's necessary, and I'm often a belts and suspenders kind of gal as well, but in this instance, it feels like that is what we do. I don't know if other yeah, people. I don't, I don't know that it's necessary to include that. Okay. Anyone disagree? Or did anyone agree with Dan? <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> Is it needed? Be sure to exclude inapplicable laws, and I think we're, we're good. Yeah. So yeah. I think we're I think we're not going to add that. Dan. Okay. Appreciate the. I, I was going to add the same thing elsewhere, so I won't bring it up. But okay. Just one word. Um, yes. Uh, on page two, line twelve. Should it be develop or consider? that the legislature might take action on, you want um, something actually developed, not, not just conceptual. Right. right. I was going to say, conceivably, you could consider something and not put it in the report. Right? So. No, I, to, um, to add to that, I actually think consider would be helpful because then they would write about maybe things they're not recommending. So here's one option. Here's why this is bad. Here's another option. Here's why it's good. Develop sounds more like they're going to kind of create from scratch um, an alternative model when maybe there's one out there. Um, Can I make this a yep. shall present instead of shall develop? Well, no, that doesn't really Well, we want them yeah, to maybe, actually maybe produce something. Some other, is a better term. We don't want just consider. We want yeah, that's some what features to look at. You need a product for yeah. $150,000. What do well, you think? <laughs> what do you consider me to recommend? <laughs> well, I think that they, they, there is the requirement to produce the report, but I think that what this would do is in, in producing that report, they would consider other models. Consider versus recommend? Consider and recommend? Consider and recommend. You're Consider means to look at, to look at, and recommend means to pick one or two that makes yeah. sense, right? I, I, I like that. So, so that's on the recommend. table we have consider and recommend and striking develop. Yeah. Karen, you were? Yeah, sure. Maria, do you have thoughts on that in terms of legal drafting? Uh, no, I think consider and recommend is fine. I think it's implied that they're going to uh, do the economic modeling. I think that's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. I think that was why the word develop was. But if you're, you know, I think that's going to be implied that they're going to have to do that to make a recommendation. Okay. And can I ask a question on line 14 of that page two? Sure. Um, again, I'm just wondering if the term of art of communications, um, market trends in communications, does that mean that we're not looking at market trends in Title I? No. Okay. So, uh, I don't believe if, if, there, if there's something I'm not aware of, but the Communications Act covers all forms of communications and their information service, telecommunication service, cable service. So I'm using it as broadly. There's a way of um, making that clear, if I'm mistaken about that, but I, I try to stick with the, the kind of the broadest language. And maybe Clay More has a... Actually, broad question and recommendation. I, I actually thought to strike <coughs> line 13 starting with the word based, based on the right-of-way assessment and shall develop current future revenue projections that reflect market trends in the communication industry. 
But when you say based on right of way assessment, you're really limiting it to mm -hmm. one option. We, we discussed many options, one of, of which was an assessment on um, the use of a right of way. And we had the Agency of Transportation here with, uh, I think two meetings ago, with very serious concerns about fee diversion and really saying, okay, well, they're only gonna buy, write about one option here, and this is you know, the right of way thing. Um, I think by striking that, you kind of get out of all of that. And, uh, you know, the, this consultant can look at that and other items. Um, yeah, I think that's important. Can I agree with that one? So what, how would it read, Clay? The consultant shall develop alternative models for, or to consider the and recommend. Consider and recommend <laughs> alternative models for revenue generation period. The model shall, dis uh, or I guess, or could be generation for public access uh, television or PEG mm -hmm. um, services. And then the model shall describe te technical implementation issues, including, I guess you could say, a need for mapping, but I don't know if you need mapping data. Yeah, I mean, you would leave that in, that everything after that. Um, but you're not going to say based on right of way assessment, because then they're just looking at that and nothing else. So do you skip over and shall develop current and future revenue projections that reflect market trends in the communications industry? No, I think that can, that can that stay. That stays, right? I think so, yeah. So all you're, all you're asking for is to strike based on a right of way assessment? Uh, based on a right of way assessment, yes. Just strike that. The okay. consultant shall consider and recommend alternative models for revenue generation and, and shall develop current and future revenue projections that reflect market trends in the communication industry. Yep, okay. I think that's good. Lauren Glenn? Yeah, I think that's fine. Thank you. You're welcome. So just to get to your question of public benefit, yes. and which I think sort of comes to this way I'm thinking. Um, so when we say PEG services, I think what I think about that that's a proxy for Congress's intent, which was to assure that there were diverse, the widest possible diversity of information sources and services. That's what Congress was intending and for PEG to accomplish. Um, and there is another part of that, which is PEG services that meet community needs and, and interests in reference to cost. So those are kind of the two aspects of what public benefit means if we're going to look at it in this more narrow framework. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we want to use PEG services as a proxy and define it you know, when we say words to say public benefit and define it, but I would refer back to the 84 Act because that's one of the, the initial definition of what we're talking about, which is to make sure that there's the free flow of information in our communities. Mm -hmm. That's really what we're trying to fund here right. in this case. Mm -hmm. so, they, yeah. so does that mean? I would think that that implies that we need a definition about what we mean by PEG access services. If, it, if, it's, if it's broader than public access television, then... Dan might have an opinion on this definition. I'm not sure. Do you speak to that? I agree with what you said, that, there, that there's a federal definition that, that exists. So I think putting a definition of PEG access in there uh, and allowing the consultant to get that federal definition from the department would work. I don't know if we want to bog down this with that definition, because the definition Should exists. there be a reference to how it's defined in the federal legislation, USC? Uh, maybe in accordance with the PEG access in accordance with the Telecommunications Act. PEG access programming in accordance with the Telecommunications Act. Yeah. I, I do think that public benefit is so broad that it's, it's just subject to. Was that the 1984 Act that you were? Well, as it was updated in 96. But you're correct. It's really the 34 Act. 30 oh, <laughs> <laughs> it goes way back. Dad was born. 
Yeah, I was not there. Um, but again, I think if, if we're intent on making this focused discussion on PEG as opposed to the public benefits that accrue from the use of the rights of way broadly, which I think is an important question, then I would refer to the genesis of the definition, which is in the federal legislation. So I'm going to look at this. Could Let's you add, add that as a reference? Yeah, yeah, we do, but let's just see where. The definition in federal code. So. As, um, uh, public, public access services as defined in USC, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I guess we would go in section A. <laughs> you need it, you need a break, is that what you're saying? May I take a quick break? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so um, before you do that, Dan, so yeah. we're going to take a brief recess, but we have a hard stop at 1030. Yeah. Okay? So I want to make sure it's, a, it's brief, we come back, we deal with this issue, and then we need to talk about um, the, the, uh, the second issue we need to discuss is the appropriation unrelated to the study but we had a suggestion for a straight appropriation for, for, for filling a gap over the next uh, year and a half or yeah. so for, for PEG TV. And then, if possible, if we're able to um, bang that out, I'm going to ask Maria and see if she can work up a new draft, which is like putting her under the gun, but that we can look at before we break at 1030. So I'm going to be cracking the whip. So we have five minutes right now. Okay. Is okay. there a men's room on this floor? Yes. There is. Right Great. Yes. Uh, looking at page four. <coughs> we, have to, we have to go back on the record. <coughs> I think, I don't think he ever took us off, did he? It's he still blinking. It. Well, it might be so, on uh, hold if it's hold. <coughs> yeah, I don't know how to read this. I used, I used to have one. If it's blinking, yeah. it may be stopped. Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Just hit, hit play again. And now it's working, right? Yeah. Report. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's okay. totally. They don't want me in your equipment. <laughs> don't feel bad. They don't want me in your equipment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are on the record. And we're waiting for Karen to get back, right? Yeah. Mike has left the building, so. I figured it out, we think. Yeah. You That's figured awesome. it out, Sean? We, we, we Great. Got okay. So, <clears throat> page four, looking at um, proposed area of study regarding Vermont interactive television. Clay, did you have thoughts on that? I, did, I don't have many thoughts. I mean, I think this is overall is fine. I just wanted for kind of um, a little bit of historical perspective that. You know, when, when VIT um, uh, closed, there was a, a commission. I think we probably have um, people who were there and uh, can provide uh, um, an endless fountain of uh, knowledge and um, recount of what happened. But there was a recommendation made. Nothing happened with that. The Department of Public Service was then re required to write another similar study. I think we produced that in 2017. Um, similar to this, are you saying? Just similar in that, uh, you know, coming up with a, a plan for, for uh, an alternative to Vermont Interactive Technology. So this would be the third iteration of that. Okay. Um, it, it might be useful for whoever does the study, digital services, to you know, look at that um, that record, and then the the second comment I would make about this, and I, I, I would say I, I uh, reached out to the Secretary of Digital Services. I haven't heard back yet on how their opinion of this legislation, um, but um, including uh, the legislative IT group um, as well. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'd love to see. Video equipment in every committee we have ever seen. Just, just the amount of resources we expend going back and forth 
between the state house. It would be uh, just a life changing um, event to have cameras that are broadcasting um, committee um, hearings for us, I think for probably everyone in state government and the public at large. So I, I'll just put that plug in. There wouldn't have any audience anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> they would have a greater audience. You just wouldn't <laughs> see them. And so, just to be clear, Clay, is there, is there anything that we're charging this study with doing that, that hasn't already been done? I just want to... The purpose of the... Well, the only change here is that now they're looking specifically at a partnership with public access centers. Okay. So that's not... I think that's something that... And okay. Do you remember, Lauren? I, it's been for well, years we, now. We actually issued a minority report on that BIT study that outlined the role of I was thinking centers. of the second study. I think with the... We had some discussion of PEG, but I'm not sure. Yeah, there was a legislative study, and then we issued. So there has been some discussion, but I think what you're identifying are two things. Um, and again, we should decide on scope, because there's nobody that wants to look at government coverage in the legislature more than me, um, <laughs> since we've been doing that since the 80s. Um, so why don't we just take those two parts? Yeah really quickly. So what is needed is a, is a budget estimate. I mean, what is needed is where would the sites be? Like, where's the need? Mm -hmm. where, where would the sites be? How much would it cost to set up? Should it be open source? Should it be you know, proprietary system? What are the operating costs? It doesn't have to be a really extensive study, but it just needs to gather enough information to say, here, legislature, if you were to reinvest in this, mm -hmm. what it would cost to do if it and, was done in that partnership. first report in the minority report do, they, do touch on that. They touch on that. Okay, and then well, to some extent. Yeah. I mean, now it's we need that was a long time ago in technology years, right? Um, but we could refer to those existing reports mm -hmm. in here, right? Whatever the previous record is, but what we really want. So the costs and benefits, is that clear enough? They will evaluate the costs and benefits of the state partnership to coordinate and expand the delivery of video conferencing services. So Lauren, if I could, Lauren Glenn, before, <coughs> before I lose it, can you go back to, you spelled out about three or four different questions that you think would be helpful in? Yes. Yeah. So one is um, the, the current need the current need assessment for you know what sites, where the site should be, where the biggest traffic is, where the biggest needs are and gaps. So assessment and then a capital cost breakdown and an operating cost breakdown. So can I make a suggestion there, Lauren Glenn? Please. Yeah. Um, maybe you have to coordinate, in other words, develop and maintain. delivery of video conferencing services, of statewide video conferencing services, right? Or just video conferencing? I think, I think statewide is what we're trying to get at with yeah. this. And so can you say it again, Dan? Uh, so it would be with PEG access centers to coordinate, develop, maintain, and expand the delivery of statewide video conferencing services. Coordinate, develop, maintain, and expand. Because I think if you leave it as coordinate and expand, you would presume that it's there, and right. I think there's a, the need for infrastructure investment. Yep. Yeah. And then maybe it would be period, and then this study would take into consideration the services previously provided by VIT and subsequent reports or record referencing. Yeah, I just don't want to lose sight of the fact that there's been a substantial amount of work done already on this topic, and this report, I don't want to sure. do, redo that work. It, certainly, if it, you want it, you can build upon it. And so just to remind us, what, what was the date of that last study in the minority report that you <coughs> referred to? That was 2015, and then we wrote a subsequent report in 2017. 
And you're saying we as in the? The Department of Public okay. Service. So, so would, would there be an opportunity then after evaluate, say, in, a co in coordination with work already prepared by the Department of Public Service? Uh, I would just say, like, review. Well, we could, we could just uh, add the Department of Public Service uh, in, in, under, in consultation with mm -hmm. Commissioner of Buildings and General Services and Department of Public Service. I, you, you could do that. I mean, I, I would say we, we've done you, this twice now. We were a member of that, yeah. that mm -hmm. commission, and then we did this subsequent report. Okay. Um, clearly, our work to date has not produced anything, so I, I don't... I don't know that having us do it a third time is going to be helpful. I'm not suggesting you do it a third time, but you could say, we've done this and here it is. Yeah, we that, can send a the link of your consultation. Uh, to the, the report on the uh, legislature's website that we've already done. So it would be fair then to say in consultation with the DPS and Commissioner of Buildings and General Services, right? Does that matter? As long as we, we can agree that in consultation with is going to be us just sending right. what we've already done. Yes. To, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I, then I would say this report would take into consideration the services previously provided by Vermont Interactive Television, subsequently renamed EIT, um, as well as legislative and administrative reports. Um, this subject because one was a legislative committee and one was a DPS report. Right. right. And the legislative committee was what year? 15. Kathy Keenan. Kathy Keenan is uh, Rob Chapman. Yeah. Was the chair? He or was the Jim Porter was the okay. chair member. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you, Clay. I missed that piece. Did you have something, Karen? Yeah. No. No. Okay, Is Mike. there a funding requirement of this piece? <coughs> I think the consultant will determine that there would be. <coughs> yeah. Now, well, it says Secretary of Digital it, Services EGS is going to do the evaluation. Uh, so, is it going to be within their regular budget or so do just we have to allocate more money for it? So I did talk with Chris Cole about this. I'm not sure I reported He's on that. Building in general yeah. services. Mm -hmm. And he very politely said the governor doesn't want to spend any more money. The legislature likes to spend money. I'm not sure we're a good house for this report because we're not inclined to recommend dollars be spent on some new project. So that is a short version of what he said. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to let you know that he said what he said. So it may be that the um, consultant could take up the work. I mean, I'm not, for what it's worth, I'm reporting no value. On well, I don't think the consultant's involved in this, no, I don't to, think so. uh, based on what's in this, in this uh, draft. Might be a, a question for John James. He's yeah. In charge for that. Okay. And, and again, and can, in, in committee testimony, he could say whether he's in agreement with this or not. Because exactly. This is going into committees. It's going into committee. I just want to remind everybody of that. It's leaving here. It's going into committee. We can have John Quinn come in. We are we're moving the football down the field. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, so I don't want to get too too hung up on that. Um, Okay, so but I appreciate that. About funding. I don't think so. I don't no. think so. All right, so without getting to, I have just one other yeah, question, sure. which is the part B, which had to do with your frame <coughs> of legislative coverage. Yeah. And is that something that we want to include and refer to in this, or do we want to keep it as a VIT? I, I was just thinking of adding uh, under the in consultation with clause. Um, the, the legislative IT department, um, just to kind of keep it inclusive of all of state government. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Okay. And 
and I don't mean to get sideways with your IT department. I just no, I mean it's. It, 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 well, so many of these issues are related. They so. are. Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> and you were saying that specifically because you think it'd be a good idea it, to have I'm it being very interaction here. Yes. Television and the oh, committee rooms. It would be fabulous. It would be, yeah. And, that, <laughs> and it, you're thinking about that in terms of interactive, right? Yes, you could have Peter Blum testify by a video conference. Mm -hmm. That happened to anyone work this time. So, yeah. Um, um, things like that, that I think would be abs um, you know, very beneficial, I think, for everyone. Including the public, who, you know, for most of us, we have day jobs and we can't come to the legislature, you know, 10 a.m. on Wednesday to, to watch our favorite issue. So one final asterisk: in addition to the DPS reports and the legislative report, the PUC had also done a study on opening meeting rooms. So I would just, I would just mention. Mm -hmm. I, just for the asterisk, I'm not I'm sure not, it has to be in the language, but I'm not sure which. There was a study about how to improve, how to open the Public Utility Commission. Oh, that was including your name change, but it had a whole aspect yes. of it. Video conferencing. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I'm just saying that it's part of the, what else is in legislative and administrative reports? I think that the PUC would also support So we may have a, yeah. Just, okay. Yeah. So, on to the big questions. Mike, do you want to speak to the uh, suggestion of the $500,000 $500, appropriation? So, um, yeah, at some point, I'm not sure which meeting it was, that the, uh, was a, identified a deficit of $500,000 as a result of the general accounting practice changes. Is that correct, Lauren? Claire? Yes, yes. I believe you brought yes. it up. Yeah. And um, so you were suggesting that um, we include a $500,000 allocation, uh, appropriation in this legislation to, uh, to make up that difference. And um, so right away that would get, one of the things I thought about is that right now. So the, this is draft language that we would use okay. going forward. <coughs> yeah, so right, right now uh, the, the, the state does not uh, actually fund in any way Peg Access TV. And so this would actually be a recommendation to change that policy and um, appropriate a certain amount of money, in this case $500,000, which I think is a uh, significant policy change uh, with respect to the role that the Peg State, Peg plays and uh, its relationship with the state. So it would be a one-time one appropriation. Time yeah. Yeah. So just to acknowledge, it would be a shift. It's, it's yeah, and it, it doesn't really. I, I would imagine it doesn't really commit us to do anything in the future. No. Uh, so if the study were to come up and, and say that uh, you know there's no further allocations needed or or further allocations are needed, then that would be uh, totally separate from this appropriation. So the question before us, given that this will all go to all the various committees, will make all its stops, is the recommendation of the committee to recommend to the larger legislature that this is a one-time appropriation that, that we recommend. And again, since this is going to committees of jurisdiction, uh, they'll take further testimony on it and decide whether it is an appropriate policy change. So I'm wondering what other committee members think on this. Have a general comment on it? Sure. Uh, I would just state that as we 
As I've presented in the past, since 2006, there's been increases in the funding uh, to AMOs, at least from Comcast perspective, and I believe other industry representatives, that in every year has surpassed all leading economic indicators uh, in the growth percentages. Uh, so as a result of that, you've seen from 2006 to 2019 a doubling of the funding. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I don't make predictions like that. Uh, but I can tell you there has been a cons considerable uptick since that period. So uh, I just offer that to the committee. So I'll plant my stake. I'm in support of it. I think that we have a gap that we're trying to full fill so that we have a little bit of breathing room going forward. Just, I don't want there to be a question of where I stand on this. I think a recommendation is a recommendation. It's going to go to the appropriate committees and the decisions will be made. The very hard decisions will be made in the appropriations committee on both sides of the building. But um, I just want to be transparent in where I stand on this. So just to confirm, it's okay. Um, this yeah, sure. Be separate from the other yes, it would. legislation. Okay. Yes, it would. Um, and if, and if $500,000 is not what people are willing to support in a one-time appropriation, that is why Maria left it um, blank so that we can talk about, well, what, how much skin are we willing to put in the game at this point? So. I, I think from my perspective, I, I, I take your point that, you know, this is just a recommendation. <coughs> I work for the Department of Public mm -hmm. Service, or we're, we're a, a department within the executive branch, so I, I wouldn't want, you know, this to be construed as the administration's sure. position. Absolutely. I don't know what the administration's position is on this. Um, I, I can guess, um, mm -hmm. but I don't know how it fits into the overall budget that they're preparing. Mm -hmm. um, I think another concern I have, just going through the you know, the, the budgeting process, I mean, everyone who comes in uh, requesting an appropriation, they, they, they get kind of looked at. And um, I guess maybe this is what Dan's trying, to, the argument that Dan's trying to make, you know, I don't know, but um, peg stations are situated a little differently from your run-of-the-mill um, uh, nonprofit. Because you have this, you have this reliable, steady stream of mm -hmm. um, of money, and I do worry about having that looked at. I mean, I think it's up to the state to decide whether to assess that fee um, and how much the fee is going to be. A lot of states don't assess it, um, and what they do with that money in context of is that to be related to cable services? Um, you know, I, I don't. I think that could be something broader than just pay. So, I guess my concern is, how is this going to be portrayed as it moves through the legislature? I don't know. That's a mm -hmm. uh, question for you. But I, I don't think I can support this simply because we're, we're basically contemplating today a million dollars in appropriations, and I don't know how that. Mm -hmm. fits into the government's budget, so I, I, I probably have to say no to this. Uh, we go to the legislature with a number of asks for funding every year. Um, this isn't one of the priority issues that cities and towns have for funding. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also contributing from the local level mm -hmm. now, so I think it would likewise be difficult for us to support um, this particular appropriation. Andrew? Um, I would be going on very much what I heard as testimony in um, this committee mm -hmm. and, uh, and thinking about the, I, I remember there was testimony that um, there were some AMOs that do have reserves and are not suffering in the same way as other AMOs and so you know I would have some concerns about uh, the process for 
allocating the money among the AMOs, and it seems like that would be something that would need to be fleshed out, but I'm not sure how that works in the process with the, with the legislature. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it would be you know, difficult to support just a general language like this. I, I, I would have some concerns mm -hmm. on how the allocation would happen, and it would seem like that would be the next logical question. So. Could, can I just add to what I said? Sure. If the if this particular question came up in the Appropriations Committee, we wouldn't oppose it. We wouldn't say anything about it one way or the other. No. You're saying wearing your hat as Vermont yeah. League of Cities and Towns. Team wouldn't say anything one way or the other. Right. Right. Yeah. The, the other option I, I no, noticed in the in the draft bill. Right here we go. Um, we don't have any findings, and um, we don't have any findings. Findings, findings. and I mean, uh, to, to to Karen's point, nothing would prevent the AMOs from finding a sponsor and presenting legislation, and you wouldn't have the, uh, I guess, the the official backing of this committee. But I mean, you could add findings oh, that say, you know, there is this gap, and. Mm -hmm. um, in funding due to the, the accounting changes and um, this is done X, Y, and Z um, perhaps this X, Y, and Z effects on, on AMO's operations or something like that so that's not us voting on recommending an appropriation but it does provide some context. amount of context or support if they came in independently for mm -hmm. So you're recommending adding findings to this Draft legislation, I guess or it's is a tall order for uh, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. so, so. I actually drafted findings. Um, <laughs> yeah. which, you gotta uh, love my vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, don't, I, I don't have an ability to provide you with a copy of it at this point. Uh, unless, unless I have to print them out here. I don't know. Let's see. <clears throat> So, um, for the sake of time, I can do the math, as anyone can. So, it seems clear to me that we're not going to include a one-time appropriation of, the proposal was $500,000. What's that? Do you have a way to make copies of this? Do you have a way to make copies in this building? I can go make copies. Oh, Maria. Yeah, that's Maria. Copies for the committee. Yeah. Please. Thank you so much, Robert. So the findings would be, would, would provide legislative intent uh, in terms of why we're drafting this legislation to begin with. Uh, why, we're, why are we doing a study committee for that matter? And then I, I guess what you're, what you're suggesting is that if we include Estimate that there's going to be a deficit of five hundred thousand dollars in the findings. We don't necessarily have to ask for an appropriation. Is that what you're saying? I, I think I'm saying it, it helps um, Lauren Glenn's organization come in and say yeah, this is a, this, the, 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 there's a there, there was right. a, a record of this existing and yeah. um, you know there's a rationale for that. What we're discussing, Maria, is we're just looking at the draft proposal for a one-time appropriation, and uh, we don't have enough votes on the committee to move that forward, but we were talking about um, how Mike had taken a stab at drafting some findings, and that we thought including findings on this uh, piece of legislation might help the van um, go forward in, in asking additionally for, for an appropriation in, in the okay. committee's jurisdiction. So we, I think Mike uh, went to try to make some, co those copies. some copies. In the meantime, so Maria has drafted uh, the changes we've made. What we discussed while you were out of the room was 
um, changes to the the Mormon director. Yeah, the, the VIT study. Yes. yes. Okay. And okay, we wanted to include in there um, the Department of Public Service. As in consultation with? Okay. Okay. And um, legislative, legislative IT. council IT department, is that? I don't know what they're doing, but yeah, whatever the. IT fits department. within, the legislative IT is okay. under okay. Leg Council currently, correct? Yes. Okay. Currently. Right, I know that is also <laughs> up for discussion in a big way. Um, and looking specifically at the questions that, that Lauren and Len offered, what a, what's a current needs assessment for VIT? Where is the need geographically? Oh, you're the VIT. You're not asking me, you're telling me to add this. I'm saying, sorry, Maria, I'm sorry. I'm, this is, yes, yes. I am asking you. I'm not, I'm not telling you to do anything. Real. I respectfully request that you include, include uh, current needs assessment. Okay. And so the the organizing questions were, uh, where is the need? You know, geographically at at, at which sites? Um, and then looking specifically <coughs> at um, capital costs and operating. costs. And then the other piece, and I'm sorry if I'm going no. too quickly, is that uh, what came to light in the discussion is there have been several previous studies on VIT. Yes. And so making sure that uh, whether it's John Quinn or you know, yep. who the secretary will be at Digital Services consults with uh, DPS to look at the legislative committee report that was done in 2015. Yep. And then the Department of Public Service did one in 2017. And um, that any work that's done on VIT should start with the work that was already done previously in those two studies. Is that a correct uh, summary of what we discussed? Or prior studies, maybe not those two, but including, just, but not limited to. Okay. Yeah. Great. Other things on that, oh, I know, that, Board changes. yes, yeah. so, um, line 11, yes, my, line 11 through, through 12, um, I'm on page four, on the, on the previous draft, right? yep, yep, um, to coordinate, develop, maintain, and expand. And expand. So to add, after coordinate, okay. develop and maintain. And then Lauren Glenn suggested on uh, line 13, the previous, uh, taking into consideration the previously provided, the, the services previously provided. Okay. Right? Yeah, previously, previously provided by previously VIT. Provided by Okay. And we're wondering on line 12, is it implied that we're talking about statewide video conferencing or should we spell out that we're talking about statewide? So right now we have delivery of video conferencing services. You can specify. Okay, yep. let's spe specify then. Other notes that folks have. This is just a last minute entry. I'm wondering if this should be the purview of the consultant and not not the administration, given the administration is not likely to recommend fund, you know, it's sort of against the grain of the policy of the administration to recommend funding for things. Maybe we really just need the consultant to look into the question. It's just a last minute thought on this. I have no opinion on the substance of that, but I would be concerned about the increased cost. Mm -hmm. 
I, I, I would say leave it with the Agency of Digital Services and uh, you know, we can change it, convey it if we need to. Okay, all right. Anyone else want to weigh in on that? Okay. <coughs> Findings. The findings, thank you. Do you have a copy, Maria? Yes. So I heard yesterday that the Senate doesn't like findings and legislation. You know, the Senate doesn't like a lot of things, but we are working across we, the building, we, not just across the I'm, aisle. We work across the building. Yes. So this, the findings are actually legislative intent. Why are we doing this legislation? Right? And so basically what this is is a statement that's, that gives the reasons why we're actually providing this legislation. Uh, so. Public, ed you know, yeah. you could read through these. I'll read through them. Uh, number one, public education and government TV provides an essential community <coughs> service to Vermont. PEG extends the concept of participatory democracy by not only providing the window to local government proceedings, but also provides a forum for citizens to voice their viewpoints. There are 25 PEG access management organizations serving Vermont. He's on cable TV service in Vermont provides 92% of PEG funding. I'm not sure whether that's accurate. Is that correct? I think that's safe to say. Do you remember? Yeah. Like that's safe to say. Yeah. Is it? I think we I'm sorry, Dan. I think it might be oh, a little bow. No, I think we did that analysis. Elizabeth says that's the number. We're good. I think I got it from someplace. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a <there's> sounding <laughs> endorsement. I think we got it from someplace. Uh, yeah. so, somewhere in this pile of paper. <laughs> okay. Well, obviously we can, you know, we can make that. Uh, as a change. result of changes in FCC rules governing the cable industry, uh, the source of PEG revenues has declined by X percent. Now we could say by $500,000 and is expected to decline further in the future. And we can modify that if we need to. Uh, PEG programming is no longer restricted to cable, but is increasingly being accessed by the internet. And to keep PEG viable, it will be necessary. I think maybe that should be changed. It may be necessary to identify sources of revenue to take into consideration all methods of PEG programming delivery. And the legislature considers a healthy and viable PEG service to be in the best interests of Vermont. So I have some comments okay. that I just found that I had sent on this. So mm -hmm. I'm just gonna read them out, is that all right? Okay. Um, so the second one, PEG extends the concept of participatory democracy by providing a window to local government proceedings, comma, a forum for citizens to voice their viewpoints, comma, and opportunities for lifelong learning and cultural exchange. So that's meant to say it's not just government access. Could, could I just add to that? Yeah. Um, it, it seems to me that um, you provide a window to state and local government mm -hmm. proceedings. Mm -hmm. yeah. could, could I just say quickly that I profusely apologize for bringing this up. I have five minutes. And, um, I think it's fine to talk about it, but I'm just wondering if this is going to result in a seven. So for the sake of debate, can I add to that and suggest that we perhaps concur that we can accept one, two, three, and eight? Because I think the main focus of debate would be in four, five, six, and seven. Yeah, I, I think I would have changed five to say, as a result of changes in gap classification, PEG revenues have de in Vermont have declined by 5%. So we could say just has declined. So it's just that number five is a little murky about okay. cause and effect. Okay. It was not, yeah, yeah. All right, so, so Dan, to your point, I think it's a good one. Can, can we coalesce around, again, this is just the next phase. Mike and I can revisit these findings in committee, take testimony, further testimony, we'll have more time in committee to do that. Can we coalesce around the findings in one, two, three, and eight? Is that what you said, Dan? Yes. Okay. And I, was, I think nine is important to include. Nine. I don't have. We a don't nine. have a nine. You don't have an. Oh, I'm sorry. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> what is the nine that you so wrote it? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Was that the one you just stated? <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. no, 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 no secret nine. nine. Oh, okay. Yes. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> the legislature, and this is from the, the original document, I think. Yes. The legislature considers a healthy and viable PEG service to be in the best interest of Vermonters. That's number eight. eight. Yeah. Number eight, yeah. Well, then I must. You added one. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I think what I did was I broke up number five okay. into a couple things, but we can just agree that that does not need to be here. Okay. That's fine. I'm sorry. No, no that's okay. all right. So, so if we leave out number five in some form or another, uh, that kind of gets away from your suggestion as to if we put it in the findings, then we don't have to actually say we want to allocate it. Well, I, 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 I just it would be helpful to ban if they wanted to pursue a um, an appropriation. So, right. so, so that was my only suggestion. So. so, is there enough agreement to say what the projected deficit might be? Or is that something? Would the that be a, a point of contention? I think it's been a point of contention. Okay. Uh, so we, but then we could we could add a, a seventh or eighth meeting was or, there or, or a fifth or sixth meeting. No, we're not going to be adding yes. any meetings. Yes. We don't so, have the money for that. But I do that. think we're one, not two, three, and eight yep. give us a general idea of yep. why we were formed, mm -hmm. and the yep. then the, the draft kind of speaks to that. And as you said, we're yeah. pushing it down the field. We are we're pushing it down the field. And I mean, is it fair to say that there's been a change in gap funding? Can we say that? Sure. Okay, yes, that can leave the that. window open. Yeah, we can say that there's been a change in gap funding. Yes. Maria, can we add that but as I a... Think... Well, we could just say gap, because gap stands for generally accepted accounting yeah, practices. Yeah. Okay, fine. However you want to word it. Just to have a line in there, that's the lifeline, essentially, that Clay is proposing to keep that discussion alive. As a result of changes in gap classification, PEG revenues have declined in Vermont. I think, you don't want to say that because you right. I just don't think, think it's based upon the over, based okay. upon the statement I made from 06. Yeah. I think right. Be, right. Okay. It's fine. I think got it. Keeping it general, there has been a change in gap. Correct. Yeah. We all can agree on that, correct? Yes. Okay. Great. So. So. All right. How does that get worded? <laughs> I think yeah. it's just as one of the numbers, as an ex, as a finding, we yeah. know okay. that there's been a change. Maria, do you have the? Changes in gas that may impact revenue? Is that, I mean, I just want to, why are we saying there are changes in gas? Well, there's a PUC like, proceeding on it that was. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right. That, that's the reason for the finding is this is an issue because it may impact available revenue. I think we say may impact. Yeah, may impact. Sure. Um, I don't know if that's. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. So one, two, three, eight, and the, the gap. Um, and then in two, state and local proceedings. And then Lauren Glenn had some additional language. I didn't get it all down. I think she read it. For, for no, that's number eight. Learning, and part of two. Part of two. Karen, didn't you have an addition to me? Yeah. yeah, just state and local. Maria has that. I got that part. And then it would go on to oh, a, educational a forum for citizens to voice their viewpoints and opportunities for lifelong learning and cultural exchange. Yeah. Are you okay with that as a number two? I might look at that again. That Thank you. Good. Okay. Yeah. So four, five, six, and seven are out. So five findings. Any other findings? Okay, you can add those. And then do you want to go through the revisions? Yes. So yeah. draft 1.2. Uh, so I hope these are consistent with uh, what your objectives were. <coughs> the first change um, is to limit it to uh, financing for PEG access channels and services. I quickly looked for USC definition. I didn't find one, um, but that can be added um, mm -hmm. in committee and to the extent that's helpful. Um, and then also said including through an assessment on providers for their use of the right of way. 
Um, because that seemed like something that was one potential source that you definitely wanted to be considered. So it's broadened to look at all options for financing PEG, including an assessment. It's implied that including means included but not limited to. Okay, and then um, one change you did not discuss, but just along those lines of broadening it on page one, line 16, this is in subdivision A, whether and to what extent communication services may be subject to any fee or right-of-way assessment, because you're no longer just talking about a right-of-way assessment, and I wanted that mm -hmm. to be consistent. Mm -hmm. um, similarly, on page two in subdivision D, line seven, looking at stating municipal laws and ordinances, assessing communications providers or services, and then including um, an assessment or regulation of the right-of-way similar intent just to broaden it. Then in subdivision two on line 13, instead of develop, we wanted the consultant shall consider and recommend alternative models for revenue generation. And it had gone on to say, based on a right of way fee, um, and then I think you talked about saying maybe for peg access services, but I just left all of that out mm -hmm. because it's clear in the charge what they're trying to finance, peg access services, and shall develop, and then the rest of that is the same. Then in subdivision three, on the top of page three, uh, you wanted to, oh, this is the, uh, having the consultant look at the potential for cost savings uh, through the AMOs, so moving that as a separate study by the auditor, making it part of this consultant study. Um, so the consultant, in consultation with the Vermont Access Network, um, shall assess, uh, da, da, da. And then I ended the sentence, it's just highlighted in bold here, um, after cost savings, I took out the language through a restructuring or consolidation of services, I think you wanted that out. And I took out the reporting requirement because it will be folded into the final report by the consultant. Um, subdivision four remained the same. Subdivision five is the appropriation. We took, you took out the bill back. I don't know if you settled on an amount. We did not. And my question to you, Maria, is can we say an amount shall be appropriated to cover the costs? And then in committee, usually we ask for even a nominal amount, even if okay. it's one dollar. I see. Okay, um, just to have a figure in there, as opposed to a to be determined. But you can, mm -hmm. I would say, put any figure, even if it's one dollar. It just makes it a little bit easier to keep track. Two fifty. You say. You say two fifty. I was going to say one fifty, but. Two hundred. Two hundred. <laughs> so be it. 200. <laughs> 200? Going once, going okay. 200,000? Yeah. Yes, not 200,000. Mm -hmm. so so like I said, <laughs> if you say, if you put out a visit, we're going to spend X amount of money. It's not going to stay yeah. like that. That's yeah. not going to stay like that. No, exactly. This is right. just to, to move it into committee, get it before appropriations. Okay. So right. uh, then, not bolded, uh, number six, what's now number six. Um, the report, instead of just going, going to the General Assembly, now specifically to the Senate Committee on Finance, and you had suggested the House Committee on Energy and Technology, I meant to add end on ways and means mm -hmm. um, there. Mm -hmm. So I can make that change, so which it should be. Uh, you have and the House Committees on Energy and Technology and on Finance. Right, it's we supposed to be end on uh, ways, ways and means. means. That's what she was just saying. Means. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she caught her mistake. Yeah. 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 Uh, the report may include draft legislation. Um, and then I changed that language a little bit. So originally it said may include draft legislation. Implementing the proposal that represents the most equitable means of extracting the greatest public benefit for Vermonters from the commercial use of the public rights of way. So just trying to expand it um, 
implementing the proposal that represents the most equitable means of extracting the greatest public benefit for Vermonters from commercial services or from the commercial use of public rights of way. I hope that's consistent with broadening the study. Uh, so then B, just to go over what you just, I think, decided, it's still with uh, ADS, Secretary of ADS, in consultation with Commissioner of BGS, Department of Public Service, and the Legislative Committee on Information Technology. Um, uh, shall evaluate uh, costs and benefits of a partnership with PEG for expanding the delivery of statewide video conferencing services, taking into consideration, oh, shall, excuse me, so on the top of page four, Line one, uh, state partnership with PEG Access Centers to coordinate, develop, and maintain, develop, maintain, and expand the delivery of statewide video conferencing services, taking into consideration the services previously mm -hmm. provided by VIT. Um, the consultant shall review any prior reports on VIT and then cite the two, the legislative report, the DPS report, shall conduct a community of uh, a community needs assessment and any uh, capital and operating expenses or cost for the services. And then I think the rest is the same. That seem consistent. Mm -hmm. So Maria, legally, what are our, we're a work group, we're not a standing committee, can we, um, can we leave this meeting today with the draft in this form and then share the draft among ourselves online after the work group? What needs to happen? And maybe you need a break to, for us to discuss well, what. Well, so assuming you're not gonna get funding to meet again, yeah. um, at this point, this was to conclude your business. You can't online even really discuss or make take formal action. Okay. Um, unless you're meeting as a committee. So if you want to vote the draft as I have just presented. read it and presented to you, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Are people comfortable doing that? Yeah. I, I just have, I, I was hoping, I'm a, an industry representative, I'm hoping to abstain from voting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm the, happy to vote on it. You're happy to vote on the draft? Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, that will also include the findings we agreed and to. And so that will be okay. the first, first subsection, okay. or first section one, maybe, just standalone findings. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the five findings that we just discussed. And so just to be clear, I know I've said it, but I just want to remind everybody, this is a draft. It's going to the committees of jurisdiction. <clears throat> Anyone that wants to weigh in on the language will be able to come before those committees. But I think it's really important that we that we move something. Can yeah. I ask one question? So, does this get delivered with a cover letter or something, or just dropping the legislation in the hopper? I mean, you know, saying that this is from the PEG Access Study Committee, or I was assuming that it would be uh, a bill that either Mike or myself. Okay. introduced or we had companion bills on, on either side okay. um, and and I imagine given that it's such an important um, issue for so many representatives and senators I can imagine that quite a few people might want to sign on so I'm just gonna say I, I think it's fine to, to vote now I just the, the number the cost is still a concern to me I think you have the votes if I would really know so I Please don't let me stop you. Um, but I, I, like I said, so I talk, the, talk about the cost the, of the study. The, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. still in sticker shock, um, and I don't, I don't know that. I do think that this kind of plants a flag for the administration that we're in support of spending that money. And I don't think I have the authority to do that at this time. I don't know. Or maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Um, well, if you have to assume that if we're going to do a study, it's going to cost some money to do the study. So well, we've got lots of studies where we got no money for it. So I mean, yeah. I, I do understand. I do take your point, and 
Um, I do know that it's going to cost money, I, but that's a lot of money. Um, so I, I, I am in support of, of the, the language. I think it's, you know, I think it's a fine study, um, but just because of, there's a cost component there, I don't think I can vote for it. You, what, if you we oh, what if we inserted the words up to 200,000? Or I was I going to suggest that, that a lot, a lot of times, re the reports have a minority letter from somebody, mm -hmm. you know, and you could say I'm endorsing the report, but not the amount. I'm, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not trying to strong arm the committee. I just want to. We have a charge from the legislature for a certain number of meetings. I think it's really important that that we stick to that and that we continue to move this issue. Absolutely. So if you're not feeling comfortable, Clay, that's fine. You can write a minority opinion. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think yes. you have the votes of Valley. So. Yeah. Dan. Yeah, and I just want to be clear, no disrespect, I take no position. I was, I, I, we always believe that our position was to provide information and be Absolutely. helpful in that process, but not take a position at the end. Understood. Okay. And I appreciate your time. Yeah. Happy to do it. So all those on the committee in favor of moving this draft uh, legislation. Can Andrew, just, do you have something else? Yes. Yes. I, um, I too, I'm concerned about the amount. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like that's something that was kind of sprung on us at the last minute, and so. Well, you were not at the last meeting. Oh, so okay. It was, was that discussed, discussed there? It was okay. discussed. I didn't hear that. Okay. The, the actual. It was in our. It was in our notes. We went back to look, okay. and so. But that okay. is why I wanted to okay. give okay. time today, yeah. so um, not to put you on the spot. But oh no. Yes. Okay. That's okay. Um, and that's fine. We still, I think we still have the votes, even if you do not want to weigh in on the, the amount. Okay. Um, yes, but I, I want to make sure that. that this is not the holdup for this, since it is just a general figure. Would people feel more comfortable if we put a dollar, as Maria proposed? Is that a common practice? That is a common practice as a placeholder, it sounds like. It would purely be a placeholder, and then and, you would and take so relevant take we're testimony. We're not taking a position on uh, on cost whatsoever. I mean, I mean, it is more important to me to have the support of the committee to say that we think that this is important. Does the cost even need to be included in there? I've already asked that question, Clay, apologize. a few minutes ago. That's okay. okay. And Maria said it is important to have at least one dollar. dollar. Right. That's okay, right. that's okay. I just. <clears throat> So, are you willing to support it if it says one dollar? Yeah. Yes. May I ask one other? Is it possible to? You said right. I could write a majority, but I mean, is there some kind of clarification? I'm not taking a stance on the cost that I can say. I guess I've said it here. That it right. You've yeah. said it to TV land. I've said it to TV land. Yes. So yes, I'm voting. But I think Clay, there is nothing yeah. to prevent you from writing anything okay. that you feel comfortable right. writing. Thank you. I feel okay. comfortable with the. Okay, all those in favor of me moving this work group proposed legislation with Maria making a line item as for a dollar for this study, please say aye. Do we need to do a roll call? I don't think we do need to do a roll call okay. for a work group. Okay. Okay. Aye. 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 So aye. aye. Opposed? We have an abstention. Anything else, council? Thank you. Presently? <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you for all the hours you've given. I know it's not easy to do work in this high pressure situation of having a timeline and having being in a fishbowl. But I appreciate it so much, and I know all of our access TV stations will be grateful that we're keeping it on the radar screen of not just the legislature, but Vermonters as a whole. So thank you. Thank you for your leadership. I really appreciate it. See you. You're